Hey everybody, this is Technoli. And you know what? One of my most requested videos is to do a Nook 10. So we did a Nook 10 and we got it up and running with OpenCore, guys. So it runs really sweet, very stable. And you know how little these guys are. So this is a real nice little i5 with 16 gigs in it. We're going to do some benchmarks on it so we can show you how well this one performs. And this EFI folder that I'm going to provide for you guys should work on any of the Nook 10s that just came out. So let's get started on the benchmarks on this and see how good it performs. Okay guys, so Let's go ahead and run some benchmarks on this thing. I did install Logic Pro X on it for all you guys that want to use it for uh, Logic or for audio production and are willing to use a USB device, like a USB 3 device or something, or even a USB 2, because it does function very well with Logic. So let's start with Geekbench and uh, we'll just see how well this performs. I have not done this, so I have no idea what the numbers are going to be. So uh, let's run it, and I'll be right back, guys. Guys, I wanted to let you know that I did OpenCore 0.5.9 on this. So uh, this is the latest version of OpenCore, and uh, didn't seem like it changed too much. I'm sure inside of it it did, but... Uh, the config.p list and all of that are pretty much the same. There's a couple of different changes. So uh, let's see what we end up with here. Oh, not bad at all. Now this is an i5. Let me show you. This is an i5 2.1 quad core processor and 16 gigs. And of course we're running the uh, Intel graphics. So we've got 1040, which I know is a good score. 4210, which is, uh, let's see, let's look. Okay, 1040. All right, so mid-2017 iMac with quad-core i7. So that's impressive. And a MacBook Pro i9, wow, mid-2018. This is a really good performance. All right, let's check that multi-score, and it was 4210. So let's go over here, 4210. Right here, that same iMac quad-core. Oh, late late 2015, iMac 27-inch. And a 2019 MacBook Pro i7. So these are really healthy scores. This is better than the i9 processors for sure. Okay, so let's get into Cinebench. I want to run Cinebench just for the heck of it and see if we could even think about using this for maybe a little video editing. All right, so let's check out the scores. Okay, we'll be right back. Okay, guys, we're coming down to the end of it, and it's really pretty impressive as far as the, the speed of the screen going across. Let's see. All right. Okay, so 1877 is the score, which is above this i7. This is an i5 10 210U processor. So, you know, this is not a horrible score. This is not terrible. It's below this i7 7700, which is, you know, uh, that's... KB Lake. So it's pretty far back from that score. So I would say this is an average score. I'm not blown away by it, but a pretty good score. Um, if you're going to do video editing on it, it's going to be not the best. I would definitely look at maybe getting the i7 unit, but it's not the worst I've ever seen, that's for sure. And for everyday use, this thing would be amazing because as far as, you know, anything else you would do on this computer, even some some uh, Photoshop and stuff like that. It's It really runs good. Bluetooth is working on this. Uh, let me show you. 
Okay, as you can see right here, we've got the Bluetooth. And I've got a Bluetooth mouse here that I'll turn on. And you can see that it's connecting to it. Right there, it's connected. There it is. So Bluetooth works fine on this. Uh, the Wi-Fi chip on this particular motherboard on these Nooks does not work for Mac OS. So you can just get one of those little USB dongles for Wi-Fi and you'll be good to go. Okay, so let's get into the Logic Pro and just see what kind of performance we can get out of it, okay? So this is our benchmark that we always use. This is on the internet that you can download. It's called the Logic Pro Benchmark 2. And so basically what it does is it gives us a synthesizer on all of our tracks and it gives us all of these plugins on each track. So these are all MIDI tracks, all right? So let's go out of here and let's see what we can do as far as how many tracks we can actually run. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to show you what I've got the sample set to and all of that stuff. All right, so let's go over here. So I'm setting it to 48K, all right? And um, we'll set it to 64 buffer size, all right? Okay, so here's 24 tracks. Let me get the CPU meter out here so we can see just how much pressure we're putting on this processor. All right, there we go. Okay, let's try 24 tracks. All right, so there we are. Uh, we're just over 50%, 60% uh, it's peaking to, and um, this core is barely even being used, okay? So really nice performance, I would say. Not an issue there. So let's crank up the tracks. So let's go to, let's see, 24, let's go to 40 tracks. Okay, 40 tracks turned on, and let's go back and hit it. All right, so we peaked at about uh, 85 to 90 percent. Yeah, 85. Yeah, 85 percent. 40 tracks, 64 buffers, 48K sample, and uh, the fan on the Nook just came on. So it's putting a little bit of pressure on it. Okay, so... Uh, Let's stop it and let's see if we can squeeze a couple more tracks out of it. Let's see if we can go to, how about 45 tracks? Let's turn those on, back it up. Okay, it peaked at 100. The sound in the headphones is pure, no distortion, no artifacts, no dropouts. And CPU fan just kicked in a little more and we're running pretty close to 100%, guys. So I don't think we could really push this any further. You might squeeze one or two more tracks out of it. That's, a, that's about it. So, you know, we've got 45 virtual instruments on here. We've got five plugins on each of those tracks. So this is really impressive. You can, you can get a lot of work done with this thing, and you can stick it in your front pocket. So uh, that is awesome. Thunderbolt audio interface. I tried my Apollo Twin X and I could not get it to work. We're hoping that soon that that will change but uh, as of right now the only thing I could really get to work was Thunderbolt display and uh, Thunderbolt audio interface unfortunately did not work but I think that that may change in the near future. So anyways grab your USB interface and plug it in and you're good to go. So there we go, guys. All right, now let's get into the BIOS in this and I'm gonna show you what we have to set up, okay? Okay, so here we are. All right, so what we wanna do is go to Advanced and uh, we'll go through each one of these screens real quick. So Storage, we wanna make sure that we have SATA controllers enabled and that we're using AHCI, everything else just like you see it. All right, let's go back. Onboard devices, of course, we have our audio controller turned on, our LAN. Our Thunderbolt is enabled. Make sure you don't check uh, LAN right here, Wi-Fi LAN, because that will turn off the Bluetooth for us. All right, let's go back. USB, 
we've got them all turned on so we're good video we want to have these set up just as you see it or you will not have high definition graphics okay add in config there's nothing in here that we have to change and so we're done there cooling everything's fine by default performance there's nothing here we have to change security we have to go here to security features and make sure everything is just like you see it here we've got VTD disabled and right down here for Thunderbolt we have legacy and the Thunderbolt does work for monitors I did test it and Thunderbolt works right out to HDMI power we can leave it set just the way it is here and the sleep mode does work and then boot right here we want to go to secure boot and make sure that it is disabled and we've got secure boot mode to standard boot priorities I've got it set to boot from my NVMe drive so I'm good there and fast boot is disabled make sure you disable that and then boot display configuration just like you see it right here so then with this one all you do is press the F10 key and then enter to save and exit okay so then it'll come up to our little picker menu and it will default to your Hackintosh drive and there we go guys we are in we are done works great this is a really good little nook very stable that's what I liked about it it was just really stable and uh, you guys know with these Hackintoshes we're looking for stability so um, I hope you enjoyed this video and please like and please guys subscribe to my channel it really helps me out a lot and hit that little bell so you're notified when I come out with a new video and we've got a lot of videos coming uh, we've got another one coming this week that you guys are gonna be really excited about alright thanks so much and we'll see you on the next one